Monday, 11 o'clock rock here at Think Tech. And today we have Community Matters, but it's really all about science. It's about the March for Science, and it's part one, because we have one at 11 o'clock with some guests, and another one, part two, at noon with other guests. So this is a role of science for society with Dr. Philip Johnson at my left, Dr. Joe Mobley between, and Dr. Helen Spafford at, at his left. Okay, and let me make short introductions, but I'm sort of relying on you guys to give more information. Okay, Dr. Philip Johnson is a, is a professor in computer sciences at the Information and Computer Science Department in UH Manila. Yes, I am. Okay, that's it. Good enough. All right, yeah, good yeah, enough yeah. for this. Yeah. Okay, and Joe Mobley is a professor of nursing in the nursing school, but he's actually a psychologist. That's right. Okay, and that's very important for this discussion. And uh, <laughs> Helen Spafford is an assistant professor uh, of plant, whoops, assistant, associate professor, you know, and chair of the Department of Plant and Environmental Protection uh, at CITAR. Welcome to the show, Helen. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we're going to talk about uh, Earth Day. Earth Day is happening on Saturday, and, right. and I guess in the afternoon, it is very important. A lot of people are coming together. This is a statement of enormous proportions from the university and for the community, and actually, it will have national visibility. Tell me about it. How did it get started, Philip? I think shortly after the inauguration, there was a movement to create a March for Science in Washington, and then it kind of went viral, as you might say, and I think at this point over, there's over 500 satellite marches all across the world. And maybe two months ago, there was a very small meeting with, I guess you guys were there, right, at the first yeah. one? Yeah. You know, so maybe five of us. Yeah. Now we have over 100 people helping to put together the Honolulu version of the March for Science. Yeah, well, you know, um, I find this all the time. For example, uh, last week in the LA, a Lele uh, ambassador program where the university, including the president, goes down to the convention center and they talk about bringing big conferences, big scientific mm -hmm. conferences here. And you start to get the feeling that, in fact, I already had the feeling, but get the feeling that uh, UH is a national, international organization and it's known around the world and it's considered a center of excellence in science. That's short form. Um, and so there has to be a lot of people at UH in Manoa and surrounding Manoa who care a lot about science, especially earth science, natural science, uh, who are going to be very enthusiastic, very involved in this program. How did you get involved, Joe? Um, well, I have a, a history of being sort of a rabble rouser. I uh, was involved in the divestment whole, um, movement at UH. We were, went to the border regions and got them to divest scholarship money from fossil fuels. So my interest in the whole climate movement, you know, goes back a couple of years. Yeah. And then when this election came along and suddenly they're dismantling all of the, uh, you know, the web-based information about climate that the Obama administration put up there and putting up, you know, a climate denier as head of the EPA and even talking about dismantling the EPA, I mean, I just couldn't stand it. So <laughs> this seemed a natural outlet for um, you know, taking out my frustration. And um, yeah, so it's just it's just grown from there. Yeah, Helen, how about you? How did you get involved? And just exactly how passionate are you about this? Well, passionate enough to be the lead organizer of the event. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah. So um, I got involved because, uh, as as Philip said, that there was a, a national march being organized, and and I started following the 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 Twitter feed on on the national march. Um, site and I, I was looking at who was making comments and I was making comments to try and connect with people to see if something was being organized in Honolulu or in Hawaii and so connected with a few people from there and, and then we decided well let's just start organizing it so, so we put together a Facebook um, page and a Twitter account and then we connected with um, an, another group on campus that was also having similar conversations and the two groups merged and then it just kind of bloomed from there. I'm sure, I mean, because everybody in town, everybody at Manoa and everybody in the community that knows about mm -hmm. Manoa, has any contact with Manoa, is going to be very excited about this. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just want to emphasize that this isn't necessarily uh, as solely a UH Manoa event. We actually have people on the organizing committee who are not part of UH Manoa ah, ah, good. Um, and who are not scientists. 
but we have um, uh, concerned citizens in the organizing groups. Um, we have lawyers, law students. We have a, a number of people who are just concerned about science in general and, and the future of science in not only um, Hawaii, but in, in the world. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it does stand for the proposition that, um, that you don't have to be a scientist to know that climate change is real. And you don't have to be a scientist to know that climate denial is ridiculous. Right? You can true. quote me on that. You yep. can quote me on that. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the facts? I mean, where, when, who, how, what's going to happen? So there are actually four um, marches in the state of Hawaii. The, the Honolulu event we're um, holding on Earth Day on April 22nd. And we'll have a rally that starts at 3 p.m at the UH Manoa campus on Bachman Lawn, which is the corner of Dole and University Avenue. Am I going to be able to get parking? We yeah. can get early, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Parking right. anywhere in Honolulu is the big question. Um, there is a parking garage uh, off Lower Campus Road that um, will be available um, for a fee for people to mm -hmm. go and park. And then, um, so the rally starts at 3 p.m. and we'll have um, activities and booths and tables and, and speakers um, at the rally and then scientific we, speakers um, scientists you guys some scientists but also some non-scientists mm. as well um, we have um, for example Chris Lee from the state legislature coming Good. in and speaking we have um, Mari Matsuda who's a law professor yep. she will be speaking um, and then we have a number of, of scientists as well. As well, we have Hawaii's poet laureate, mm -hmm. Aloha, doing slam oh, poetry. Sure, yeah, That's yeah, right. yeah. Who, by the way, got his degree in nuclear physics at MIT. From wow. nuclear physics at MIT to slam. So he's, yeah, so he's a very good example <laughs> of the power of, of science. Touching all the bases. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> and so then, then at four, um, that's when the march begins. And, and Joe here is going to be uh, leading the march uh, down University Avenue, and then we're doing a, a loop and back up University Avenue. So the march itself is just over a mile long, um, and uh, then there's music and you know activities and things for people to participate in, and, and food trucks. <laughs> of course. Right. How do you do anything in Hawaii without food, food trucks? trucks. Yeah. <laughs> so how long is this, the whole procedure? So we're envisioning, uh, you know, the, the rally will start at 3 um, till about 6 p.m. Ah, okay. Yeah. But it may last longer. It may last a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Joe, you, you mentioned before that you take these things seriously. In fact, you're kind of an activist, yeah. a philosophical activist anyway. A, a recent activist. Have, have, you, have you led a lot of parades? Because, you know, <laughs> many of us have not had that experience just yet. This will be my first <laughs> leading what, what, a parade. How does it feel? Well, it's pretty cool. I like the idea. Um, but you know, it's definitely a group effort. Uh, it, the, you know, as far as leadership, she's been the main one. I'm just yeah. a figurehead. I'm like the <laughs> Queen of England. Heard it here on Think Tank, yeah. Yeah, you, you just the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what, what do you do though? When you, do you have a white horse and some kind of no. Uh, better than that, we have a banner. We have uh, okay. we'll be carrying a, a, a two-man banner up front. And uh, just making sure that you know along the way that you know everybody's taken care of. Um, but uh, yeah, we're anticipating a lot of people. So uh, the HPD has been uh, kind enough to block off a lane for us. There are two lanes, in mm -hmm. fact. And uh, we'll have people at each uh, intersection to make sure people cross safely. So it's a well thought out yeah. um, deal. And I want to put a shout out to city and county, mm -hmm. the Department of Transportation, who did an excellent job in setting things up for us. Yeah. And um, a remarkable case of functional bureaucracy that <laughs> in one meeting they had everything well, all laid out. It's an important thing, that's why. It is, it is, it is public really safety. Yeah. Yeah, we've actually had nothing but support um, from almost anybody we've contacted. The yeah. UH administration has been extremely helpful to us. We've uh, talked with people from Hawaii Pacific University, Shamanad, um, local high-tech community. So this isn't, a we, we like to say this is a nonpartisan event. So um, you can have conservatives who believe in science as a way to produce evidence that helps policy making. You can have liberals that believe that same thing. And um, so this march is really, and it's also, you know, transcends just, for example, the climate change mm. issue. 
Um, the, the current administration, for example, uh, proposed a cut of $6 billion to the NIH, which would effectively cut off all new research in health. So, um, you know, these are the kinds of things where we feel um, people of all kind of political persuasions can come together and say, wait a second, I like research on cancer. You know, <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah, right, right. right. And, and so um, we're hoping that this can be a movement that can really bring people together yeah. to say, you know, science is a great thing. It really helps society um, on, along so many dimensions. And that um, as, as Americans, we want to stand up, and it, it, global citizens even, stand up and say, this is a really important technique that humans have evolved to figure things out about how to make things better for themselves and for the other you know, plants and animals. So you mentioned that you know every sector in the community is behind this. And you know we have a community that sometimes people don't vote, sometimes they don't read the paper. Only one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know sometimes they don't get involved in community issues, national issues especially, or or global issues. Why is it? You know, just to extend your comments of a minute uh -huh, ago. Uh -huh. Why is it um, that now we have such support from so many places in this community? Well, I think. Hawaii, the people in Hawaii, at least in my experience, they're, they're very attuned to the natural environment and they're, they're very attuned to the specialness of this place and they're very attuned to the threats to this place because we are a small island and we see the impacts of mm. things. Um, and so perhaps this is an issue that unlike other ones, people look at it and say, this is, you know, this really directly affects me. Yeah, especially in a place where, where sea level rise will will affect our lives and yeah. where, um, you know, the, um, pandemics could affect us any day of right. the week. Right, right, yeah. 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 So uh, at, at the parade, I mean, are you going to have slogans? Because I, I like to sort of adapt myself, adjust myself to them now. Um, songs, uh, slogans, uh, chants, if you will. Have you figured that out? Because if you haven't, we can spend a few minutes right after the show and work something out. <laughs> well, it is, we, we have been having these sign-making workshops that have been ongoing all week, and so everyone will have their own. And all that we've asked people to do is just be mindful that this is a family event. So, you know, nothing nasty aimed towards any individual, yeah. but, but anything that kind of represents, you know, all the broad array of issues <clears throat> here. My favorite one was, Alternative facts equals the square root of negative one. <laughs> it's nerd humor, yeah. yeah. Isn't that great? But, uh, that's, but this, that's just an example. But, you know, mainly, um, you know, to me, the broader issue is the undermining of truth. And so it gives you a broad array of things. It's not just science, but the whole issue of truth in general. Yeah. How many people can you, can you take in this parade? And how many people would you like to have? And what do you expect will be the crowd? We're thinking that there'll probably be anywhere between 1,000 to 3,000, but if there's more... You could we, be surprised. We, we would love that. I mean, quite honestly, you know, our, our feeling is that anyone who feels that what happens with science or, or values science, um, uh, whatever they connect with um, and, and want to see continue, they should come. Yeah. And that's pretty much everybody. So if you turn on a light switch, there's science that has gone into that process of turning on a light switch. If you have a cell phone and you value that and you want to see those kinds of technologies and innovations continue, then you should come because this is what we're wanting to support is this, this continued support of research and advocacy for science. Do you think there's anybody in this community would not agree? Is there a counter movement of some kind? No, no, we deny that. Yeah. Um, well, if they do and they tweet about it, then they're <laughs> kind of in contradiction with themselves. An avalanche. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to take a short break. That's uh, Helen uh, uh, Spafford and um, uh, Joe Mobley and uh, Phil Johnson and all uh, professors and assistant professors uh, at uh, UH Manoa. They're all heavily involved in Earth Day and the March for Science, which is this Saturday, the 22nd of April, and right after this break, we're going to talk about exactly how science works in our society. That's what I really want to get to. We'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Senator Russell Ruderman, representing Pune and Ka'u on the Big Island, and the host of the Ruderman Roundtable. We're here at Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock. 
You can join us on thinktechhawaii.com, and you can find links to our YouTube channel for past episodes there. I want to thank Think Tech Hawaii for hosting us, and we'll see you again on the Ruderman Roundtable. Mahalo. Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist in Hawaii, and I do a show called Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where shrinks and sometimes other people come on and talk about the art and science of psychology, talking to people, relationships. Uh, so if you are curious about shrinks and want to be shrunk and don't know where to go, tune into Shrink Wrap Hawaii. All right? All right. If you're, if you're looking for Community Matters, you're, you're in the right place. <laughs> and this is the March for Science on Earth Day on Saturday, the 22nd of April, uh, with Helen Spafford and Joe Mobley and Phil Johnson, all from UH, all going to be there, all excited about it. And I would like to talk about the role of science in society. This is an important overarching question. But first, I want to ask you what you intend to achieve. We know that you'll be there and people will be excited, but how do you want to shape or, or reshape public opinion on science this Saturday? What do you want to do? Well, I think the big part is not so much um, reshaping public opinion because people are always going to have their different opinions about different things, but it's um, really about bringing the community together and creating um, a community of advocates for science. And so as, as people come to the march, they'll have the opportunity to um, sign up if they want to continue to be involved in science advocacy in the future. And, and it's also about bringing people together to have the conversation and to stand shoulder to shoulder with others who also think that science is important and want to see you know, science education continues, funding for scientific research continue, and evidence-based decision-making um, happen in the highest levels of government. Yeah. In addition to the food trucks, <laughs> we will also have, uh, I don't know how many, 20, 30, 40 different organizations yes. at table. So you should come to the march, not only to march and make your voice heard, but also because this is a fantastic opportunity to learn about many, many science-based organizations in Hawaii and find the one that you want to support. So it would be fantastic if all of these thousand, thousands of people who come on Saturday pick just one organization out of those there and say, I'm going to volunteer and help you. I love it. You know, adopt a, adopt a department. <laughs> right. Adopt a school at UH. You know, back in the, in the early 2000s, there was a popular bumper sticker, I don't remember. It said, have you hugged your researcher today? Oh, uh -huh. that's great. <laughs> I think we should have some more of those. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's, let's talk about the, you know, the, the larger picture. I mean, let's, let's reel this all back to um, um, Da Vinci or something. <laughs> You know, and I was talking to you guys about this PBS thing I saw about coming out of the Rift Valley in East Africa and migrating around the world, and our species has been very successful, and what's the relationship of that success in science? And what is the relationship now of that success in science and the survival of the species? Phil, go first. Well, well. Um, <laughs> that's a tall order. Um, I guess... You know, going back several thousand years, you might find one person whose opinion you trusted, and they might say whatever they say about the world, and you would have to believe it. And science arose as a way of uh, a, a social process that enabled people to work together to produce reproducible findings. So you would no longer have to rely on just one person as being the source of truth, but you could create a mechanism whereby hundreds or thousands of people could reproduce the same finding. And then you'd have much greater faith in that statement about the world because it could be replicated and it could be reviewed by so many different people. Yeah, so yeah. science is a very social process. Science doesn't always get it perfect. But what happens with science over a certain period of time is that so many people follow a procedure and come to the same conclusion and gather the same kind of data that makes it vanishingly unlikely that that's not true. Yeah. And I think climate change is one of those situations where there has been so much evidence 
amassed by so many different people that despite the fact that you can go to some sites and find you know a hundred people or something that that who maybe aren't even climatologists who kind of come to some different conclusion but the vast majority of the reviewed knowledge supports a given outcome and I think that's really important for society that we don't have to just trust a political leader or you know any one person to kind of state what reality is but we have a process whereby over time we can continue to mass evidence to help us understand what's what's actually happening yeah, in the world. The most important truth of all. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You feel the same way or you disagree? No, I agree. <laughs> if you uh, go back to the roots of empiricism and you know ancient Greece, it was about verifiability and falsifiability. I mean, otherwise you have different opinions that can never be, you know, worked out. But with positivism, you know, the idea that, you know, if something exists, it can be verified, falsified, and then other people agree with that. And, um, you know, there's the elevation of truth, and that is the, you know, the, the basis of any civilization. You have to have something that can be agreed upon. Um, the and social the, compact. Yeah. Call it the, the, the scientific or factual contact, contact. Yeah, but now <laughs> there seems to be reversal of that. So that anyone who has something, an opinion that resonates with people, that becomes truth. And so my whole reaction to this has just been, you know, I've been appalled at how, you know, the truth has been devalued to the point where anybody's version can be lifted up and then suddenly becomes the idea of the day. And um, to me, this is a much bigger deal than just, you know, hug your favorite researcher. Yeah. It's about, you know, bringing truth back, you know, you know, in journalism and everything, you know, it's, tr the thing about science is that it's, of all the disciplines, it has all the different approaches to, to knowledge. You know, it has an established way of a protocol for establishing truth, and it elevates it more probably than any other pursuit, but it, um, that to me is the key issue. It's taken us farther than any other human endeavor, hasn't it? Right. What we've learned about finding the truth, finding the methodology, testing the truth, uh, making the truth work for right. us. Yeah. And if you want to make America great, you got to be elevating that. You bet. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, yeah, that's okay. the root of it. I thought we were great, actually. Well, we can be greater. <laughs> Helen, you know, what, what does this mean to Hawaii? Now, Hawaii has, has great science at UH. I mean, nobody will deny that. We have people coming from everywhere telling us that. And, and this show, we, we talk to people every single Monday. We talk about the research that's going on, uh, especially in earth science, but once in a while, computer science. Good, too. good, glad to hear <laughs> And, you know, and we, we have learned that this is a place of excellence. Um, but what does, this, what does it mean? These, these, prob these concepts, these problems of truth, the determination of truth, what does it mean here, especially for us in this place? I think, um, I think in Hawaii, probably more so than, or, or especially, um, reliance on evidence and, and factual decision making is really important because Hawaii faces some critical issues now. Um, probably in a more, um, what's the word, severe way in terms of climate change, in terms of long-term sustainability, um, in terms of don't forget tropical infectious diseases. Tropical infectious diseases, yeah. um, you know, than, than many other parts of the country are going to face. A lot of what we see or we're concerned about for the future is going to happen in Hawaii first. And so we really need to address these problems um, immediately in, in our state. We can't afford to wait um, because we're going to see the effects of these things probably first. Yeah, yeah. And, and Philip, you know, you're a data man. Mm -hmm. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Because, because every computer science is a data man. What do we have but data? You know, we don't you know, get to find out the truth of the data, so to speak. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so are you collecting data on who is going to come? Are you collecting data on doing, you know, maybe a little social media with the people who come and helping them do social media with the people who didn't come? Are you going to do that? It's funny you ask that question, Jay. Um, <laughs> there, there have been a variety of discussions amongst the organizing committee about how are we going to measure how many people are, are at the march. And we thought of lots of different things, but we finally decided drones 
I yeah. knew you were going to say yeah. that. <laughs> so, so one of my colleagues, Kim Binstead, who you might know sure, from yes, the High Seas Project on the Big Island, yes, um, and Mars Exploration, she will be flying a drone oh, um, during the march so that we can <laughs> get some aerial photos and use that to try to get a good count on the, the yeah. tenants. Yeah, yeah, you think that Washington might uh, dispute the exact number of people? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I also want to know, um, you know, wh how you expect people will reach out afterward. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, uh, you know, this event is it's local. I mean, most people there are going to be local, I, I think. But you want them to speak out. You want them to speak to others. How can they best do that? Who should they write to? How should they use, you know, the technology to get the word out from Hawaii? Because people do have, people on the mainland, elsewhere, have a lot of regard for Hawaii and Hawaii's affinity with science. So how do we get that message out? I think, um, well, that I think the key is to, to act locally as well. Um, so, yeah, communicating with our, our state legislators and, and lawmakers, but also reaching out to our um, federal um, representatives as well is mm -hmm. really, really important. Um, and we are encouraging advocacy. So keeping track of what, what bills are being put forth, what uh, referendums and, and things like that are being put forward is, is important. We want to see um, Hawaii's um, citizens be engaged in the process. Okay, take a minute and, and tell uh, camera one over there what you want them to say. Just to slip into their shoes for a minute and speak for them. Um, science is important. Funding for science is important. And evidence-based decision-making is important. That's very succinct, mm -hmm. but passionate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, how about Joe? What, what would you say to them, the people out there who will get the message here? that any democracy rests on the importance of truth, and anything that undermines truth undermines that democracy. Uh, a free society must have truth. Yeah, that's, that's important. Phil, you close. Get involved in the Hawaii State Science Fair. <laughs> it's happening. I just, yeah. I just was a judge last week for the yeah. Hawaii Science Fair, and yeah. it is the most mm. inspiring positive experience I think I have all year and I leave it with a newfound hope for the future of Hawaii to see these young people who are so passionate about science and who are inspired about learning as a result of engaging mm -hmm. with science and the scientific process so if if anything comes out of this if there are twice as many students involved in science fair that would be a great outcome for me that's great I agree with all these guys. <laughs> That's what think tech is about. It's about tech. It's about energy, which is kind of tech, isn't it? It's about global awareness. It's about diversification of a mono economy. It's about making those kids sing mm -hmm. and having them express their, themselves to the state and to the world and come back and live with us and help us survive. Any disagreement? No. no. Okay, that being the case, this meeting is concluded. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. That's Helen, true. Joe, Phil, thank you thank for coming you. down. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs>